the process of translation will actually decode the messenger RNA sequence into the actual protein. With the assistance of the ribosome, several other proteins, and of the transfer RNA, which brings the amino acid into place and places in the correct spot. This process will follow genetic code. For example, here you have a codon that starts with GCU. That means if that's already the RNA code, then you're going to have G, C, and U, meaning alanine will be our first amino acid. A, C, G will be A, C, G means T, H, R will be your second amino acid, and so forth, until you hit, you hit the stop code on U, A, G, telling you that the protein is done at the very end. And that's kind of how the DNA code works. If you change one of the codons, it might end up changing the actual message. And it's also, remember, important to start from the right place, otherwise you affect the entire reading frame. Which is why the start codon is so important. Because it will tell the protein exactly where to start so it doesn't make a mistake. As far as the amino acids, which will be the building blocks for building the proteins, they come from cellular digestive processes. Either from exogenous proteins, which are swallowed up by phagocytosis, pinocytosis, or receptor-mediated endocytosis. Or from amino acids, which come already digested through facilitated transport through gated channels through ac across the cell membrane. Or from endogenous proteins, which are proteins which are destroyed because they're no longer being used by the cell or by remains of large organelles like mitochondria, which got destroyed in a process called macroautophagy. Once you actually have the amino acids in place, an enzyme called amino acid tRNA synthetase will attach itself to a specific amino acid it's supposed to work on, charge it by adding a, the phosphate groups of an ATP molecule to it, and then find the correct transfer RNA that has the anticodon that represents that amino acid and facilitate the process of connecting that amino acid to the transfer RNA, making therefore the transfer RNA being charged. This charged transfer RNA actually looks like a cloverleaf molecule if you look at it two-dimensionally. Or three-dimensionally, it will actually fold forwards like you see in the pictures here. And they will have an anticodon attachment site in the bottom, an amino acid attachment site in the top, which will connect through something called an Easter bond, and they will have two sides which will be useful to attach to the sites of the ribosomal RNA inside the ribosome. The ribosomal RNA, it looks like a multi-domain protein, globular in shape, because it will have structural and catalytic functions, like that of an enzyme. This is one of the components that makes up the ribosome. The ribosome has two subunits. Each subunit is made of a combination of RNA and, and protein, mostly protein, about 60% protein and 40% and RNA. The small subunit will connect to the messenger RNA first, and then the large subunit will connect on top of that once the initiation complex has been built. Each ribosome will also have an E, a P, and an A site. The A site is where you add a new amino acid to the chain. A P site is where you leave the amino acid that was already added and is waiting for another one to be put next to it. And the E site is the exit site from which transfer RNAs, which are already discharged of their amino acid, are exiting from. All three kinds of RNA, therefore, are necessary for this process to be completed. There's not one that's more important than the other. You can't you can't translate without the message that gives the instructions, without the machinery that actually does it, which is the ribosome, or without the, the thing that actually brings the building blocks, which is a transfer RNA, which also acts to decode the actual message. The transfer RNA is the shape that it is because it needs to attach to the ribosome, to the amino acid, and to the codon of the messenger RNA. The ribosome is the shape that it is because it has catalytic and structural functions. And the messenger array needs to be straight like it is because it makes it easier to read in between the two subunits of the, of the ribosomal RNA. The actual process of transcription happened in three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. During the initiation process, the actual star codon will be found by the small subunit with the help of initiation factors, which will actually scan the messenger RNA until they find the actual star codon. And the upstream untranslated region will facilitate this process as well. Then, when this actually found, another set of initiation factors will facilitate the process of connection of a transfer RNA which has the proper anticodon to match the start codon and will be carrying methanol. Then the large subunit will bind itself on top of that with the help of other initiation factors. All of this will be spending energy. And that makes the initiation complex. Then the next transfer RNA will be added to the A site by the same similar process. And the elongation factors will facilitate the process of attaching that transfer RNA to the correct codon if it has the anticodon that it needs to have. And if it does, it will be carrying the next amino acid of the sequence, which will be right next to the amino acid that was already there before on the transfer RNA that's sitting on the P site. With the use of energy, an enzyme called 
peptidyl transferase will actually transfer the amino acid chain that's growing from the I mean, transfer RNA that's in the P site to the transfer RNA that's in the A site and form a new bond between the two adjacent amino acids. Then the elongation factors will help the whole thing translocate or shift a little bit one over and the transfer RNA that was in the A site will move to the P site and the one in the P site will move to the E site which is now on charge of its, of its amino acid and transfer out of the ribosome. This process will continue over and over until finally you reach the point of hitting the stop codon, at which point no transfer RNA can connect. Instead, a molecule called release factor will connect and initiate the separation of the complex and the right large subunit, the small subunit, the messenger RNA, and the now free polypeptide chain will all separate and actually create the pro protein that's completed. Sometimes this process will happen in an assembly line with multiple ribosomes reading the messenger RNA all at once, each reading a subsequent piece of it. And that will make several proteins all at once. Once this process is finally completed, you actually have protein synthesis. But after this, some proteins may still need to be processed and multiple things can actually be done to this protein, like it lists here on the screen. And some of these things involve fixing misfolded proteins, folding proteins to actually conform to the tertiary or quaternary structure that they need to be, translocating the proteins to the raw VR because they need to be exported from the cell, sending them inside the nucleus because there are nuclear proteins, including those things which are needed in DNA synthesis and RNA synthesis, and also some proteins will be destroyed because they're no longer needed, other proteins will be changed for specialized roles, many things will actually need to be done. The most important of these things are translocation, which is organized by something called the leading sequence. The very first amino acids in the sequence of the protein usually serve as an indication of whether this protein is destined for use on the inside of the cell or on the outside of the cell. A special particle called SRP or signal recognition particle which is made of a combination of proteins and RNA, yet another kind of RNA, SRP RNA, will actually get together to form this particle which then get together and scan the initial pieces of the protein. If the initial piece has a code that says it needs to be sent outside the cell, that particle will initiate the process where the protein will be dragged until it actually attaches to the surface of the Rafi ER with a particle that's, that's called the SRP receptor. And from that point on, the protein will be secreted straight into a pore, which will actually then send the protein inside the lumen of the Rafi ER, where it will be trapped to be processed and folded and then finally sent out of the cell once it actually goes into the Goji, packaged into a vesicle and beyond. The folding mechanisms also include several proteins which are called chaperone proteins, which help the proteins fold in the appropriate way. Without the chaperone proteins, sometimes proteins will fold incorrectly and will be useless and the process will have to restart and the proteins will have to be destroyed. This processing method is actually made clear by some proteins which have special domains just to tell the, the cell where the protein is to go, when the protein needs to be destroyed, if the protein needs to be assembled into a larger chunk or subunits need to be connected together, or if the protein needs to be broken into smaller chunks in order to actually be functional, and so forth. And all of these things are going to be part of the regulation process of the protein after the protein is actually synthesized.